So, welcome to this lecture. This is lecture 11. So, so far, so far we have defined topological spaces and continuous maps between them. Uh, next, we will define continuous maps in terms of limits. We want to define continuity in terms of limits in a metric space. So, we will have to define metric spaces and then limits and then finally give a criterion of when a map is continuous in metric spaces in terms of limits and that is what is the theme going to be the theme of the next few lectures. So, uh, we begin with a discussion on closed subspaces. So, we are still not we have not reached metric spaces, but we will reach there soon. Uh, so, definition. So, this is a general discussion. Uh, the definition of a closed subset is very easy. So, let x be a topological space. A subset z contained in x is said to be closed if the complement x minus z is an open subset of x. Okay. So, recall what we mean by this. So, x is a topological space. So, it has a topology tau and uh, z is said to be closed if when we take the complement that is in tau. So, let us make a remark. Uh, one easily checks the following properties. Of closed subsets. These follow from the definition of a topology. So, the first property is that the empty set phi and the full set x are both closed. The second property is that let z 1 up to z r be finitely many closed sets then their union z 1 union z 2 union z r is closed. Okay. And the third property is that let i be a set and suppose we are given a collection of closed subsets of closed subsets then the intersection of these closed subsets which is a subset of x is closed And all these three properties, all the above properties follow from the analogous properties for uh, open subsets, 
from the respective properties of open subsets. Uh, that is one remark and the second remark is that suppose we are given a collection of subsets, suppose we are given a subset S contained in the power set of X which means we are given a collection of subsets of X which satisfy the above three properties. Right, so, S satisfies these properties 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So, then let tau be the collection of those u in x such that x minus u is contained in s, belongs to s sorry. Yeah. So, then tau defines a topology on x. So, in other words what this remark tells us is that to define a topology on x, we should either it is enough to specify the collection of open subsets which should satisfy the three conditions which uh, came which we saw in the first lecture. Either that or we can specify a collection of subsets which satisfy these three conditions, these three conditions here. And, uh, in, and that would specify a topology. Okay. So, this remark is left as an exercise. Proof of this remark, prove this. So, this is left as an exercise. And another simple uh, statement which is again left as an exercise which just follows from the definition. Uh, let x and y be topological spaces and let f from x to y be a map of sets. Okay. So, then f is continuous if and only if write out the whole thing if and only if for every closed subset in y z contained in y the subset f inverse z is this is a subset of x is a closed subset. So, the main point behind this exercise is this easy check that f inverse of y minus z is equal to x minus f inverse z. So, we have to use this well known property of the inverse image of a map. So, in one of the lectures we saw after we introduced various ways of specifying topologies, we saw several examples. Yeah. So, let us just revisit those examples and see which of those subsets are closed and which are open. Okay. So, the first example or one of the examples we had seen was the set S1, right. this is those x comma y in R2 says that x square plus y square is equal to 1. Right. So, can we say something about this set? Is this set open or closed? So, the answer to this is quite easy. Uh, so, first we have to make the following observations. So, recall that we proved that the set of continuous maps is closed under a multiplication. And 
condition right and also that we also proved that the projection maps the projections from a product are continuous right so therefore this map x comma y maps to x is continuous right so just for fun let's just make uh, so we have both these maps x comma y goes to x and x comma y goes to y is continuous right so we can make the graph of this map x comma y goes to y So let's say this is going to the y axis. Right. So if we take a small open subset here, right, so the inverse image of that is going to be this strip over here. If this is A and this is B, so then this is going to be 0 comma A and this is going to be 0 comma B. This point here is 0 comma A, this point here is 0 comma B, right? And we have to take this open So the inverse image of this interval is this uh, is this tube is a strip if I may say so and clearly this is open because given any point over here we can always find a square like this right this is a picture of the projection onto the y coordinate and uh, similarly we can make a picture of the projection onto the x coordinate. So here the inverse image of a comma b will be this open strip So this point is a comma zero, this point here, and this point is b comma zero. Right. And clearly, this is also open because given any point here, we can always find a right. Uh, so now both these projections are continuous. So therefore, x comma y goes to x square is also continuous because this is simply the map. Uh, let me call this map P one. Let me call this map P2. So this is simply the map P1 square, right? So if you want, so x comma y maps to P1 x comma y and the square of this. Yeah. So both these are continuous. Similarly, x comma y goes to y square is continuous, and addition is also continuous. So therefore, this implies that. So the results we had proved in the previous class, x comma y square is a continuous map. Right, and uh, now uh, inside R, the subset one is a closed subset. Right, because what is the complement of one? So this is zero, and this is the point one. So we are just deleting this point. We are deleting this. So, if I take any x over here, then I can always find a small epsilon such that uh, the neighborhood 
the epsilon neighborhood around x is going to be contained in r minus. So, in other words for every r minus 1 for every x in r minus 1 we can find epsilon positive such that this epsilon neighborhood around x is contained in r minus 1. Right. Therefore, r minus 1 is open which implies the subset which contains only 1 is closed. Right. So, this in turn implies, so let us call this function, give this function a name f. So, since f is continuous, this implies that f inverse of a closed subset is closed. So, let me just write that of a closed subset. Is closed, which implies that f inverse of this set singleton 1 is closed. Right? But what is f inverse 1? f inverse of this singleton 1 is exactly those x comma y by definition in R2 such that f of x comma y is equal to 1. This is same as saying that x square plus y square is equal to 1. Right. But this is precisely equal to the set S1. So, therefore, we see that S1 is a closed subset. Of R2. On the other hand, we could have proved this fact directly from the definitions because we can look at S1. S1 is this, yeah. So if we take any point in R2 minus S1, if we we can we could have directly shown, and it's not very hard that we can find a small ball or a square of radius of epsilon, which is completely contained inside the complement. So we could have proved that directly as well, right? Okay. So let's take the second example. Another example which we had seen was the spheres S n, right? This is those x naught up to x n in R n plus 1 such that x naught square plus x 1 square plus plus x n square is equal to 1. Okay, so, is S n open or can we say okay, let me just phrase it like that is S n open or closed? In R n plus one, right? And by the same reasoning as above, yeah. So since the function f from R n plus one to R, given by f of x naught up to x n is equal to x naught square plus x n square, is continuous. Once again, because the projections are continuous and therefore the squares of each of the projection is continuous, and when we add them, that is continuous. Yeah. So this implies that. So once again, f inverse of this singleton one is a closed subset. Sorry. R n plus one. So which implies that S n is a closed subset of Rn, of Rn plus 1. Right? And this is uh, this is exactly equal to Sn by the same reason as the previous example. Okay. So, here are two examples. Another example we had seen was uh, the subset G L n R. Right? This is equal to those uh, A in n cross n matrices says that determinant of A is not equal to 0. Right. So, again can we say if this is open or closed? So, let us look at the determinant map from M and R to R. Right. So, as an example, let us look at the determinant of a 2 cross 2 matrix. 
matrix. So, let us say this is x 1 1, x 1 2, x 2 1, x 2 2. Right. So, we know that the determinant is x 1 1, x 2 2 minus x 2 1, x 1 2. Right. So, each of the projections are continuous. So, each x i j is continuous and the product of continuous maps is continuous. So, this implies that this is continuous. Yeah. And similarly, this is continuous okay. because the projections are continuous and this function is the product of uh, two projections. Right? So, for instance, this function is this first function is x 1 maps to x 1 1 x 2 2. Right? So, this function is continuous. So, uh, therefore, so in this case, this continuous and in general we know that right, uh, right. So, in general since the determinant is a polynomial in the coefficients of a matrix. Right? So, this determinant function is actually a polynomial function in the in the entries. Yeah. So, therefore, and uh, each coefficient is the projection map right? and the projection is continuous therefore, polynomials in projections are continuous. So, therefore, the determinant map is continuous. Right? And now, uh, note that G L and R is simply the determinant inverse of this subset R minus 0. Right? So, determinant is continuous and as R minus 0 is open, So, this implies G L and R is an open subset of M and R. So, another example we can take is the set S L and R, right? This is those A in M and R. So, is that determinant of A is equal to 1? So, this is clearly, so this is closed as S L and R is equal to determinant inverse of 1. Yeah. And yet another example we saw was the set of orthogonal matrices, right? This is those A in M and R such that A transpose A is equal to identity, right? So, uh, we claim that this is a closed subset. Yeah, now, in each of the above examples showing that uh, these subsets are closed directly is could be uh, somewhat complicated and we see that once we use once we obtain these subsets, once we can realize these subsets as inverse images under continuous maps of certain subsets. So, then it becomes a lot more easier. So, here also we are going to do the same thing. So, first we have to look at this map from M and R to M and R. So, let us call this map F. So, the map F is A goes to A transpose A. Right? So, let us see what uh, this does for a 2 cross 2 matrix. Uh, 
Uh, so we have x11, x12, x21, x22, right? So this is going to map to the transpose of this. times the matrix. Right? But this is equal to x11 square x21 x oh, sorry x21 square. This is x11 x12 plus x21 x21. x12 square plus x22 square. Right? So, notice that on the right hand side each entry is a polynomial in the entries of A. Right? And MNR here has the product topology, which is the same as a standard topology. So, if we view MNR as Rn square, right? So, f is continuous, if and only if each Fij is continuous, right? Uh, so, Fij, so in our example, f i f let us say what is f 1 1. So, f 1 1 is precisely this coordinate right. So, f 1 1 of this matrix uh, let us denote this matrix by x for simplicity of notation right. Similarly, f 1 2 of x is equal to this coordinate that is x 1 1 x 1 2 plus x 2 1 x 2 2. Right. And similarly, we have f 2 1 of x, this is x 1 2, x 1 1 plus x 2 2, x 2 1 and finally, we have f 2 2 x. Right. So, all these each of the coordinate functions, so each of the coordinate functions coordinates is a polynomial. in the entries of x. In other words, each of these coordinate functions, we can write it as a polynomial uh, obtained using the projection maps. Each of the projections is continuous and since we pro take product and add etcetera, that is what also going to be continuous. So, therefore, each of these coordinate functions is a continuous function, which implies that the map, the f is a continuous function, right. Because so we can view f as a map uh, from MNR to MNR. Well, standard topology or the product topology it doesn't matter because as we saw the product topology on RM is same as the standard topology on RM, right? So therefore, so this shows that f is continuous. Right. And uh, now, uh, so note that, so this is for the 2 cross 2 example, yeah. So, in the n cross n situation, so in the n cross n situation, or oh, let me not write this. So, uh, you can, you can write down explicit coordinates for general n, right. So, what are f i j for general n? in terms of x i j. So, this is an easy exercise. So, you can just write this down. Yeah. In any case, this show, so this shows that f is continuous in general. Yeah. So, f is from MNR to MNR and it is continuous. So, clearly this O n r is equal to f inverse of the identity matrix. 
right? So MNR contains the identity matrix, yeah? And therefore, to show that, to show that ONR is closed in MNR, it suffices to show that uh, this singleton identity in MNR is a closed subset. But this is a very general result, so we will write this as lemma, right. So let A1 up to AM in Rm be an element, right. So let us denote this by A, right. So then Rm minus this point A is a closed subset. Okay, so proof this is left as an exercise. So we will end here.